Hey, hey, everybody. Salud, mi familia, and welcome to a Fast and Furious Game Show Explosion. I am Paul Shear. I'm Amy Nicholson. And this is a very exciting episode of Screen Test, a movie game show, where, Amy, what do they need to know about this movie game show? Uh, that it's brutal and difficult and hard, and we like to torture people. That's right. And you know what? Truthfully, this game is won by karaoke rules, okay? We don't need you to be the smartest. We don't need you to be the best. We just need you to sell it as hard as you can. And you in the chat, you are playing a very, very big part in this because you will take on uh, some very important roles here today. But most importantly, Amy, Fast and Furious just celebrated its 20-year anniversary, 20 years, nine films. It's never going to stop. If, if the years, if yeah. I mean, if the franchise lives its life a quarter mile at a time, how many miles is that? I mean, truly, we could go up to 100 miles. It could be as long as the runway that that plane in Fast Five <laughs> drove on. It, it was never ending. So we ask you, in 2079, same cast, what would you be calling the new Fast and Furious movie? Uh, you know what? Like, we have this example right here, Fast and Furious 50. It's never a last ride. What do you have here for your Fast and Furious in 2079, same cast. Maybe they're genetically engineered. What do we got? Um, here we go. We have uh, white jeans, <laughs> the tired and the sluggish. Uh, that's great. 12 angry furies, cyber fast, cyber furious. I like that. Uh, these are great. 12, 12 angry furies, or I guess furries, I guess is what I was thinking of. Furies, I guess is different. Uh, fast 50 mobility scooter. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got F-19, the Widowmaker, uh, Fast and Furious sitting on your balls. Uh, all right. I, how about the F? All right. So F-401K. So I like that. That's uh, clever. Yeah. That's clever. I appreciate that. Uh, Fast and Furious, New Blood, Old Family. Uh, <laughs> I like this one for its simplicity. Fast and Furious presents Herb and Eunice. <laughs> I appreciate Fast 50. We're making great time. That seems like something that Vin would be wearing on a t-shirt when he's at his retirement home. I also like uh, the Fast and the Forgetful or uh, Fast and Furious Antiques Roadshow or Geriatric 50 Handicap Drift. <laughs> I have to uh, say, fast... when I got to Fast and Furious putting on the miles, I read it as putting on the miles and it just made me think it was a golf movie, which fits. <laughs> Look, the the franchise could handle it becoming like a tin cup sequel. Uh, that's exactly what we want from you all. We want you to jump in, have fun, and we have three amazing contestants. Three contestants who say that they are the biggest Fast and Furious fans. Uh, Molly, can you bring in our three contestants? All right, here they are. Boom! Welcome them all. This is Chauncey, Tyler, and Zachary. Uh, three Fast and Furious aficionados. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, guys, they say the best way to get to know someone is finding out their favorite Fast and Furious film. So we're going to ask you all that. Uh, so uh, let's let's go first uh, with, um, let's see here. Uh, let's go to our, our good friend, Zach. Zach, welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, it, it is. A, I'm doing well, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we, are, we are excited to have you here. And we want to know, how did you get involved in the Fast and Furious? What, 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 like, what was the the moment that you became a Fast and Furious fan? Well, my grandma actually was a very big Fast and Furious all the way back in two thousand one. Uh, <laughs> wow, it's, I yeah. know it, it, it's kind of one of those weird things to say, uh, yeah. you know, your your grandma, but uh, she's she's an action freak, um, yeah. You know, uh, so she presented to me when I was a kid, so I just took it from there and watched a few here and there and, you know, try to implement the movie's family uh, values to my life. I, I love this. <laughs> that is a true story. That is amazing. And by the way, if your grandma introduced it to you at 50, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you know, if, if, I don't know how old she is now, but what is your favorite Fast and Furious? Um, you know, my favorite ice cream is vanilla and my favorite, I'm a very ordinary, you know, plain guy. So I have to go with the Fast Five, you know, okay. it's one of the Classic. best for a reason. Yeah. Wait, I, I, I have a question. Can your does your grandma do push ups? Like, how much does she lift? Um, well, she lifted me when I was but a, a wee lad, so however, I guess 70 pounds back then. 
uh, I'll have to try it out again. Uh, okay. This so yeah, she's still kicking, and I I owe it to Fast and. <laughs> all right there we go all right let's uh let's meet up with uh chauncey who is actually in a car right now sorry oh, let me get chauncey in here uh chauncey welcome uh you uh you are in a car i appreciate that is this method contesting yep <laughs> all right so chauncey where did your fast and furious journey begin so I remember I was 12 years old. I was very upset because I had nothing to do and I wanted to go to the movies. I begged my parents to take the drop, uh, drop me out take fast when I was hooked. Okay. Instantly. That's it. You're in. You're in. And, and what is your favorite fast movie? It's got to be Fast Five. I mean, everyone mm -hmm. says you it. Have the the Rock, plus you're bringing, it's the All Star game, basically. The you Rock bring called Vince himself back, Grand, Yeah. School. Rock called himself Franchise Viagra after that. Uh, what is your worst Fast and Furious film? Fast and Furious 4. Or Fast yeah. and Furious. Mm -hmm. You can't beat it. I, I hear you. Okay, great. Uh, I'll, I love this. I love that you're in a car. And let's meet our uh, our final contestant. Uh, all right, let's see here. Hold on one second. I'm just doing all my, uh, my, my little... Here, Tyler. Welcome, Tyler. Welcome to the show. Hey. Tyler. How did you get involved? What what was your Fast and uh, Furious entry point? Uh, I saw that first movie, The Fast and The Furious, uh, back in 2001. Uh, I guess I was 15. And I checked my watch. And uh, yeah, I really liked it. And then I didn't see another one until um, uh, about a week ago. And then I caught up on uh, all the rest of these Fast okay. and Furious movies. <laughs> I wow, so it. you crammed for this? You watch these movies at a hundred miles an hour? Uh yeah. I went ride or die all the way. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh all right. So contestants, here's how it's gonna go. Like we said, karaoke rules. We want you to be fun. We want you to have uh, a good time. There's nothing wrong. Uh we want you to just kind of go with your gut here, you know, entertain us more than anything else. And Amy, do you want to set up our first uh our first category? I do, I do. We're going to ease our way into this battle with an elevator pitch. This is our cold open. So now, from Charlize Theron to Helen Mirren, Cardi B to John Cena, basically every single actor in Hollywood has squeezed into the franchise of Fast and Furious. It's basically like a very fast clown car. So what I want from you guys is your elevator pitch. You're on an elevator with an executive, with Justin, then you're like, what are we going to do? I want you to give them the quick pitch for the next great cast member for the Fast and Furious franchise. Tell us an actor, a performer, anyone, anything. Probably animate is better than inanimate, but give us who should be in the next Fast, Fast and Furious movie and who they should play. And if you come with a good character name, that's even more points. Yeah, I love this. All right, so who wants to go first? If you uh, ring in first, if you have a good answer of who you want to jump into the Fast and Furious franchise, great. Oh my gosh. Do we just pick you automatically? Oh my gosh, Tyler, we got you. We we threw you under the gauntlet. Is that too fast for you? Can you do uh, it? Let's get Tim Robinson in there. Uh, I've been watching that uh, season yes. two of I Think It Should Leave. I think he would be uh, great to be uh, Tyrese's uh, new buddy. Uh, I think he could uh, bring some energy to the franchise. And, I like uh, it. So you got Tej, Roman, and Tim Robinson, and I imagine Tim Robinson's yelling. Maybe he's in a hot dog costume. At some point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, solid, solid choice. Uh, let's bring in somebody else now to our, our middle section here. All right, Chauncey, uh, we got you. What do you got? I would put in Hugh Jackman. Ooh. Oh. Uh, not, only can, not only can you do the action, but Vin Diesel's always wanted to do a musical. Who can do a musical but Hugh Jackman? Ooh, I like this. And do you see him as a good guy, a bad guy? What do you see? He's a bad Like John Cena, he's a bad guy at first. Dom eventually wins him over. And at the cookout, him, Ludacris, and Roman have a have a triple uh, triple fun. All right, all right. This is interesting. Okay. All right, so far, I like it. I like it. All right, our final one. This is a, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure coming into this. Uh, all right, Zach. What do you think? Who should be in our Fast Furious? So I'm in the same elevator with Chauncey, and I piggyback that musical idea and throw in Josh Gad. I think the oh, whole thing should be a musical. Uh, you know, it worked for Book of Mormon. It worked for Frozen 1 and 2. Um, and Josh Gad is, let's call him like 
the weasel or some the fast weasel and he's a car repair man and it really just centers around him fixing up these damaged cars like a cue always saying like Vin D Dom please stop why are you doing this <laughs> and there's all right you know what oh my god that Tyler do you work for Disney are you also are you on drugs what's what's happening over there <laughs> um Tyler, I don't know if he's on this drugs. Is Zach. Oh, sorry, sorry, Zach. Sorry, Zach, um, Zach, Zach. But uh, I'm just on a drug called, you know, NOS. That's, By the way, we all, that's that's the number one drug in the Fast and Furious world, but it worked out great for you because you get the first points on the board because you've really painted a great picture. It wasn't just the actor. It was the full thing. We got a little bit of song in there. Josh Gad as the weasel, the new mechanic in the Fast and Furious world. And that's going to benefit you very much because you are going to get to go first in our next round. So let's bring us into round one of Fast and Furious, the game show. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to pull everybody out here that uh, that is not playing. And we'll just have uh, Zach on the screen. So Zach, here are your categories, all right? Let's check them out. We have, um, where in the world is Jason Stathiego, Shea Dom, and Gutenberg? These are the three categories we have. Where in the world is Jason Stathiego, Shea Dom, and Gutenberg? Each one of these is a Fast and Furious category. You get to pick any which one first. Well, I've been catching up on my Carmen Sandiego uh episode so i'm gonna go with where in the world is jason stain ego <laughs> that great choice great choice hold on for one second amy will set this up oh no oh no oh no oh no zach you have just unleashed the character double da, 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 da. And what does that mean it means we are about to meet somebody very special who's got a special challenge now zach the good news for you here is that a correct answer will win you double points but to make it more challenging, your fellow contestants are also available to chime in and steal both points that this is worth. It's terrifying. And here, to make it even more terrifying, comes our special guest. You there? I'm Jason Statham. Oh my right? goodness. Probably the best part of the franchise, even though now I've been relegated to spin-off movies because I pissed off Vin Diesel. Anyway, I got a new role as Carmen San Diego. It's going to be like John Wick, but with globes. Anyway, you're going to help me get ready. I need you and all your contestants to tell me all the places that the Fast and Furious have ever been. I'm talking all nine movies. Every right answer gets you a point. Every wrong answer, no penalty. All right, so all the contestants get in here. And as you got a location, just tell it off and we'll get it going. Here we go. Pulling all the contestants, Molly. Molly, Ooh. pull them all in. Here we go. All right. Raise your hand. We'll call on you. Here we go. All the locations that the Fast and Furious has been in, and we can start now. Uh, yes, Tyler. Brazil. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Zach. Rio. Correct. <gasps> That's also Brazil. Darn it. I knew <laughs> I was afraid of that. <laughs> that is correct, but wrong. All right, next. Go. This is it. They've been all over the fucking world. You don't remember? They have yeah. to be in England. England, of course. England, yeah. That's Ooh. fucking right. All right, what do we got? Who else? Havana. Havana, yes. yeah. That's right. Los Angeles. Card yeah, fucking A. I get that fucking <laughs> one right out of the gate. There we go. Come on, let's keep it going. Detroit, they have to be. They're cars there. Uh, Miami. Correct. Uh, Come on, mates. Figure this fucking out. They've been all over the world. Come on. New York City. Correct. That seemed like a guess. <laughs> yeah, this is terrible. All Japan. right. Oh, Tokyo. Close it up. Close it up. Close it up. Uh, we Tokyo can give him Tokyo. We can, even though it's in a title. I think it counts. I think it counts. These people the what the fucking worst. Fucking bullocks. Uh, I hear some other places. LA, Tokyo, Rio, London, Abu Dhabi, Medivan, Key West, Canary Islands, Colorado, Iceland, Russia, or Georgia, and Thailand. Put Goodbye, um, that was cool. That that was a madhouse. I think I need Jason Statham to tell me how many points anybody gets for that. 
I, you know, Amy, I was trying to keep uh, track here, but I was so enamored with seeing Jason Statham. <laughs> uh, I, I think that we can, uh, we can kind of, we know that they got LA, uh, Tokyo, mm -hmm. uh, Cuba, and New York and London. I feel like those are the ones that we have definitely, uh, that were definitely next. And Brazil, and Brazil. And Brazil. I feel like when I counted it, I got Tyler with five and Zach with two. Yeah, Tyler was on fire there. Tyler was on fire. I want to make sure, right. sure that Tyler gets his full fireball of points. All right. Well, Tyler, he, he's on fire. So let's keep the fire going with Tyler. So, Tyler, it is now your chance to jump in here and pick the next category because we have two categories less. It is Shadom or Gutenberg. Uh, let's go Gutenberg. Okay, this is a great category. Uh, obviously, Fast and Furious is one of the only original franchises to go on for nine films. The only other film to kind of have that long of a, of a birth, an original birth, I, I think is Police Academy. So what we're going to do right now is we have uh, replaced a character from the Fast and Furious with Steve Gutenberg. We're going to show you a still. You have to tell us who they have replaced. It's a famous still from the movie. We got a couple of shots here. So... Who has Steve Gutenberg replaced in this still from Fast and Furious 1? Uh, Mia. That's right. Uh, there we go. Good job. All right. Who is uh, he replaced in this still? Is that Brian? Oh, incorrect. That was Charlize <laughs> Theron. Who does he replace? Oh, whoop. there we go. Yeah, there we go. There <laughs> you see. Uh, in this still. Um, Jeez. I have no idea. Uh, from Hobbs and Shaw. From Hobbs going, and Shaw. I haven't seen Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, it is it is Idris Elba. Idris Elba <laughs> there. So you got one of three, right, Molly? Is there no, one more left? Yeah, no, you got one of three there. So, uh, Amy, what do you want to give from for points there? I mean, he just came off of a hot streak of points. Yeah, Tyler's rich for points. He can do with just one point. All right, just one point. All right, great. Thank you, Tyler, for playing. And now let's remove Tyler and let's bring in our Chauncey. Oh, there he goes. Chauncey, you have your final question here. This is- Oh, uh, you're outside. <laughs> yeah, my phone is getting too hot. My phone is getting too hot, so. <laughs> I don't want to lose that. All oh, right, so, it's Chauncey, uh, Amy is going to tell you all about Shea Dom. Shea Dom. Oh, yeah. Now, Chauncey, as you know, Dominic Toretto is a man of fine tastes. I mean, famously, he drinks only the finest ice cold Coronas. Occasionally, he extends a pinky, if you look in the extended cuts. Um, and his eating habits in the franchise, I would say, are avant-garde. So, Chauncey, which of these three things has Dominic Toretto done on screen? One, eaten a roasted peanut while still in the shell. Two, eaten a whole shrimp, including the tail. Or three, eaten a cold hot dog without the bun. Ooh, I'm pretty Peanut sure. I'm, I'm oh, sorry. I'm pretty sure he ate the shrimp. Ooh, Chauncey, let's see if you're correct. Here we go. We're gonna watch some classic. Look at this, Vin eating a shrimp with the tail on. Nothing sexier than men eating shrimp with the wind blowing in their hair. It looks like he ate the full tail. I've never he seen eats anyone. The full tail. Ooh. <laughs> that must have been a terrible day on set. I feel like he was like he was trying to eat it like popcorn, and he just forgot that there was a tail there because uh, that's neither macho nor is it cool. It's ju that just seems like a choking hazard to me. Uh, but uh, but you know, if it was deep fried, it would be a different story. Uh, Chauncey got a point on the board. So uh, right now we're going to calculate our points, and as we are calculating our points, uh, we are going to get you ready for round two. By getting the audience engaged, audience, um, is this where we're going for the audience? I think it is. Uh, audience, it's been rumored that Fast and Furious was about to cross over with Jurassic Park. If Universal Studios had their druthers, they would have crossed over. What is a Fast and Furious franchise that you would like to see them merge with? What would you like to see Fast and Furious team up with in the chats? Let's see the best answers we will bring forward. What do we got? My mom's house. Okay, you'd like to see them at your mom's house? Great. Harry Potter. Ooh, I would like that. I would like them, the wizards and the racers, to come together. Dinobots, these are great. Minions. <laughs> Minions, yes. Pacific Rim seems more likely. Uh, Fast and Furious meets Triple X. I like that because you could have Vin playing two roles. I think you could do the oh, same thing with oh, no, 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 no. Rosewater Trout is saying John Wick. I think that is apt. I like that one. 
I don't know how it would work, but I would love to see the Fast and Furious crew with Mannequin, the Mannequin movies. <laughs> I don't know how why that would work. Uh, back to the Future, Fast to Back to the Future, Fast to the Future. I mean, we are missing out on time travel. I think that that's great. Um, Sex in the City and Fast and the Furious. Do you think that would work? I don't know. I, I feel like I feel yeah. like I would like to see them. Yeah. I'm into Keymaster 92's idea, Transformers but romantic, because this is a love letter between men and cars. And now this, I think Keymaster is exactly right. A love letter between men and their cars that are actually able to love them back. I like the Ocean's Eleven mix. Let's like bring in another crew. Have uh, Danny Ocean meet up with the Fast and Furious crew. Who's better? Who's smarter? I like that. Uh, Fast and Furious meet the Visitor, the old school movie, The Visitor, or the the, the newer movie about the man with the divorce, the deceased wife. Wife. Sorry, uh, I don't know which one, but I'm going to go with the deceased wife one. Uh, all right, and uh, finally, Crank and Fast and Furious. These are all great ideas. Uh, you should all be getting paid. And Amy. As we've now calculated our totals, it is time for us to go into the second round. And our second round, who is, uh, Molly, you could pop them up. Who is on the board with the least amount of points right now? All right, let's see. All right, we have all of our contestants up right now. Um, we should get some sort of, I'm going to see if we have a, a, some sort of scoring total here. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, okay, we got Tyler. Uh, is this right? Is this scored right right here? Maybe it's not. Um all right, let's see. All right, uh, I'll check it out. Well, we'll figure out the score in a second. I'm going to wait for an official score. Um, all right, <laughs> Molly, who is ready to go? Who is who is up here with the least amount of points? We're waiting on Molly. Molly, Molly, really, I, I gave a lot of power to Molly today because we were running short. Okay, in the private chat, she says, let's check it out. The least amount of points. All right, she's got Tyler with three, Chauncey with one, and Zach with one. So uh, between Zach and Chauncey, who do you want to go first, uh, Amy? What do you think? Um, I think we want Chauncey to go first. Now that Chauncey's right, feeling limber and he's out in the sunshine. All Chauncey, right, Chauncey. you go for it, Amy. have been selected for a fast-talking challenge. Oh, no. You, all right, so I hope that you are ready. With your, your tongue is limber, your brain is fast. You are ready to snowball us with some high-quality bullshitting. So this fast talking challenge is called a messenger from God. Now on a recent episode of the podcast galaxy brains, which is super fun. If anybody wants to check it out, Jen Yamato, John Ray and Dave Schilling hypothesized that because Dom wears white, he is an angel, kind of like how you look right now, Chauncey. <laughs> However, they thought that because he is an angel, perhaps these fast and furious films might be a faith based franchise. We want you to argue the opposite direction. We want you to argue that because Dom is also often seen wearing black, that Dom is a devil. We want you to convince us that in these movies, Dom is a devil out to harm everyone and anything that comes in his path, and that these movies promote the devil's agenda. And you know what, Chauncey? We're, it seemed like you were getting yelled at as we were setting that up for you, uh, that you were being yelled at to move to a different location. So we appreciate you paying attention while you were on the move. Yep. Were, you, were you really getting yelled at? No, not yelled at. Just directed to go elsewhere. <laughs> do you need us to step in and, and sort them straight no 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 it's fine all right chauncey you have your rules in front of you right okay. now convince us that dom is the devil how is this movie evil yeah go for it you got uh let's see i'll set the timer here for 45 seconds first of all dominic toretto started off the franchise by stealing dvd players tvs so he's already a thief he always puts everybody in peril, his sister, his girlfriend, his best friends. He doesn't care. He has Letty jump off, jump off a, a car onto a bridge so he can catch her. Maybe he catches her, maybe he doesn't. Um, let's see. Vince almost died because he refused to listen to, to, about Brian. Um, let's see. Mia, Mia had to run on the favela roofs while pregnant. That's not great. <laughs> I like uh, it. You're 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 making a strong case. You do, you, when you feel like you've nailed it, you can stop, or you can keep on going. He has, yeah, he has no problems having uh, Tej and Rome go up into space in a Pontiac Fiero rocket, even though they could probably die at any second. And he basically gets everybody involved in crime, and even gets the Rock basically fired from his job because he's a terrible, terrible cop, and Gal Gadot as well. He's wow. responsible for, yeah, he's responsible for Han uh, dying slash not dying, but they don't know about Kurt Russell. And he's willing, he was willing to sell out his brother just because he refused to listen. All right. Wow. That was an amazing, first of all, extra points 
for being on the move, being reprimanded, and not missing a beat. You have created for us, I think, a very compelling argument that Dom is one of the worst villains in cinematic history. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, all right, so out of a possible five, Amy, I mean, what would you do? I, I, I'm ready to give him the full five. I feel like there was no hesitation. He jumped right in, and he was on the move. Honestly, you know that I'm very stingy with the full five. Yeah. Um, and yet, uh, the way that he describes it, he really has convinced me that this is a franchise that glamorizes selfishness, lawlessness, recklessness with your friends' lives. I'm 100% all in. I mean, it makes me think of how, for some reason in Fast 9, it starts with him being like, I care about family, and then locking his kid in his box, and then going off to Georgia. And I don't know if his kid ever gets out of the box. So Chauncey, full five for you. Good job. By the way, Chauncey, you are the audience favorite right now. I got to tell you, people are, are <laughs> down with Chauncey, which is going to be really great because now you have six points on the board. We're going to now jump in. We're going to see our next contestant here. We're going to go to Zach. Zach, uh, you came in strong. We loved you in the first round. We know that you got this in you uh, because you have a very interesting challenge here. Your challenge is going to be uh, to act. It's an acting challenge because we know that family is so important to this franchise. Uh, I mean, the Tredo clan is family and you need to convince us as an actor uh, how important family is. What we've done is we've actually merged together all the lines about family because they've actually said the word family 51 times in nine films. We've taken all the words together. We've made it into an amazing monologue that you have to deliver. It's in the private chat right now. You can see, and we want you to take a moment, take a breath and deliver the best, be the best Toretto you can be and convince us that family is the most important thing. <clears throat> Get the right lighting here. Yes. I love this. He's kind of, you know, he's, he's pretty tired. Yeah. He loves his family. Loves his family. He's also bald, so I can't really. Um, all right, here we go. We're family. There's always room for family. I don't have friends. I got family. What's real is family. You turn turn your back on family. Even when they do, this is your family. This is my family. This crew is about family. I already lost my family once. I'm offering you a chance right now to make that family whole again. You got to turn your back on family. My brother never told you, never threatened a man's family. You're not the only one with family full of eccentrics. Your family is a true aim track. You never should have messed with a man's family. The worst thing you could do to a Toretto is take away a family. Your code is about family. Like a family. You build it right. They'll live behind you. That's the only way you're going to keep your family safe. On was my family too. More importantly, you and your family don't got to go around funerals. You got some rough times ahead. It's going to be okay because we're family. Whether it's a quarter mile away or half across. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye indeed. All right. Well, that was uh Zach. That that was uh that was really Zach Fasty Furious uh, Ferguson. Uh <laughs> that was uh, a pretty uh, amazing um, rendition. I feel like people were saying they felt Vin was here with us. They felt some people felt that Groot was with us. Uh I, I you feel know, like Nicholas Nicholas Cage was with us. I, I mean, look, that's a great character to add. Uh, he loves scars. I mean, Amy, what do you think? I, I feel like he definitely committed. It was a hard monologue to, to deliver because every line said the word family in it. But it made it made sense. It did. It did. And actually, that's only half of the times the franchise says the word family. So if you guys were familyed out, that's just a taste of what it's like watching all of these movies back to back to back to back to back. So I really appreciate all of the service of all of you who are here. Um. I'm going to say, I don't know if I really believed that you believed in family. Wow, Zach? Amy, wow. I didn't think about yeah. my grandma enough. No, no. <laughs> like, 
I want you to say one of the lines again and think about your grandma. Pick a line of your choice that makes you think of your grandma. I really want to feel it in my soul. Okay, let's see. My grandma would love to hear something about... Oh, yeah, my grandma... I, she has... Okay, here we go. I'll do... Um, All right, here we go. I'll do... Yeah. I don't have friends. I got family. What's real is family. You don't turn your back on family, <laughs> even when they do. This is your family. This is my family. This crew, Grandma, it's family. I, I'm, it's my oh, family. Wait, we, we got it. We got it now. I think, Amy, I'm feeling a solid three. I'm feeling a solid three on this one. Uh, it feels a too, a little too breathy. Some people say a little too Homer Simpson. I, I'm in the three zone. Do you want to knock me up or knock me down on this? Um, for the sake of his grandma, I'm going to go with a 3.5. All right, 3.5. Uh, Ooh. perfect. Let's move into our final, uh, round here in, uh, round two. And before we go into our group round three, this is a singing, uh, challenge for you, Tyler, a singing challenge. Uh, we're going to pipe in some music for you. Hopefully it will work. It never really does work, but we're <laughs> going to try the best way we can. Um, I hope you're familiar with candle in the wind because we have seen how the justice for Han movement resurrected a beloved character in this franchise. And we now need to bring back yet another beloved character who met her demise on an airplane that blew up, like I said, seemingly on an 80 mile long runway. Can you, through song, give us an ode to Giselle? Uh, you know, Giselle, if you've forgotten, she was a liaison, uh, a weapons expert, a former CIA operative, and a Mossad agent. Uh, so, what can you tell us about Giselle to the wonderful Alton John song, Candle in the Wind? Uh, and and we'll see what we can what we can do here. And you know, again, karaoke rules. The best effort is going to be uh, the best way. Her name is Giselle uh, Giselle Yashir. I don't know if we've ever really heard her last name, but it's uh, Y A S H A R. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Here we go. Play you in and tell you if you can't hear it, just raise your hand. Oh, damn! <laughs> okay. We can start it again. We'll start it again. We can okay, start again. Can we start again? Yeah, we'll start okay. again. No, no, this is this All is right. we need to make sure he gets it right. Here we go. Goodbye, Giselle Yazir. Though we never knew your last name, you had the role in this. I think we knew your name. <laughs> you were <sighs> Christ. <laughs> no, it's good. You're you're killing it. Barely knew her. She loved Han. She fought with guns. She fought with guns. Okay. And here and we go. it seems to me you lived your life like a woman with a gun. Good. Always fighting with the Fast and Furious team in two films or one. You. <laughs> uh, uh, it. we're it. there with you we're, we're there with you we were there with you it had you. to be Giselle I don't remember Giselle <laughs> I know she was Gal Gadot yes you were right you could have brought that up into the song it was a valiant <laughs> yeah. try it was a hard song to do uh, people love that you got in there people feel like give you all the points because he tried so hard and I think one of the things that we realized with this is even though we love Giselle just like Han, we don't know much about them. We really don't know much <laughs> about them. We want them to live, but we can't really describe them. I, I would argue that most of the characters, if pressed, we'd have a hard time giving you what, they, what they're what they into. <laughs> um, but, I mean, people are saying they're too choked up, 10 out of 10. Uh, Amy, I know that you love a song challenge. We're, we're out of five points. What, what are you feeling? You know... You know, I really admired your moxie, Tyler, very much. However, I really, in good conscience, cannot go above three points on this. I'm oh, wow. sorry. As wow. much as I adore that you tried. Um, people say it was too hard, Amy. They say it was too hard. It was impossible. Uh, and then people said, if anything, Tyler tried too hard. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, nothing is impossible in a movie where you can drive a car across three skyscrapers and take, like, a Datsun up to the Mir satellite. 
Okay, here's what I'm going to say, Amy, because Fast and Furious is about family. My family in the chat love Tyler so much. I'm going to add another point to it. I'm going to give him four points. So, uh, so Tyler, are you gets turning four. me into Jason Statham? Am I the Jason Statham now? You got it. You got five. You got in there. He got five points. We're going to tally up our, <laughs> our scores right now. Uh, you could be Jason Statham. I think you've just, you know, and uh, and so now what we people really feel like, uh, you know, you drove it home. So what we have right here is Zach with six. Chauncey with, uh, I believe at the end of the day, Chauncey is walking away with four and a half points and Tyler is walking away with seven points. So uh, it's Tyler, Zach and Chauncey. But guess what team? It's not about who wins because we all know Fast and Furious is about family and that's what you're going to need here in the final round. Okay. The final round. This is a big one. Um, now we are doing this in a little bit of a different way for our final round. You are going to build a Fast and Furious movie, okay? The audience or the people watching the chat right now are going to come up with the title of the Fast and Furious movie. We're going to pick one of the best titles and together you're going to have to work together. Amy, can you explain what they're going to do? I can. Together, the three of you, Chauncey, Tyler, and Zach are going to build a movie pitch together. We're giving each of the two, each of the three of you two secret elements to include into your pitch. Everybody's going to go twice. You're going to go in two circles and you're going to add together to build a collective story based on the title that we're going to select from the chat right now. Uh, you're not limited to just the two things that we're going to slip each one of you. You can do anything you want. As long as you're listening, building, thinking, you can derail, you can do anything as long as it is an interesting, cohesive story. Um, I love it. Now, the order that we're going to go, uh, just so that you're ready, is we're going to start with Chauncey, then go to Tyler, then go to Zach. And we'll say go when it is time to switch to the next person. Okay, so I'm looking here in the chat room, and we're going to make sure that you all have your private uh, cues. Do you all have your cues here? Um, all right, so I'm looking at all the titles that people are coming up with. And Amy, I would love to help you help me decide here. Uh, this was uh, Fast 10, Time Speeds By, uh, Fast and Furious 10, The Voyage Home, Fast and Festivus, Fast and the Fry Fest, Ooh, Fast the 10, Tension. Fest. Ooh, I like that. Fast Lost and Fire 10. Fest. Family Nitrous. Circus. Ooh, I like that. Fast I, and Furious, Nitrous of the Living Dead. I think I want to go with W.K. Wolfram and Fast and Furious Family Circus. Okay, so you're going maybe for more of a comedy bent, I, I guess, is, or, or maybe not. We're just we'll kind see. of playing We'll on. see what they give us. Maybe it's just a drama set at a circus. All right. I love all of this. All right. So this is a great title for you all. Uh, all right. So uh, I guess we're going to have to see everyone check in your private chat right now. You'll see what you have to start off with. Uh, just look at your own prompts and uh, you'll see you have two prompts in there. So I think this is going to work. We had to switch from Zoom at the very last second. So this is why we are a little bit uh, behind today. But uh, I think this is going to work out perfectly. All right. Uh, when you all see it, just give us a thumbs up. All right. Uh, and Chauncey when, Chauncey, when you're ready, take it away. Okay. So this movie is going to be a Letty-centric story because we haven't learned much about Letty except that she grew up a couple doors down from Dom, Mia, and uh, now John Cena. So it's going to start off with a really, really big musical montage of her growing up, learning how to fix cars. It's going to be set to... Pat Benatar hit me with your best shot. Letty's learning how to drive. She's checking out Dom as he gets older. Dom checks out her. As she starts to get older, she and Mia kind of are friends. And um, this is all about how she meets Dom. And then her then it goes to the years where she has amnesia and what an adventure she was coming up with while at the Shaws. Wow, I love this. This is a great start. Amy, I think a great start. Let's go jump into Tyler. Tyler, what are we going to add? So, so far, it seems like she's living a great life. Uh, we all love Letty. What happens, though, that's going to complicate this? Uh, so she's living a good life. Uh, but elsewhere, um, Josh Gad is a Plagar villain. And yes. he, uh, he wants to assemble. Um, he wants to. <laughs> That's okay. We got yeah. So, what does the bad guy want to do? The the weasel, I believe his name was uh, Josh Gad. The weasel. What is he trying to do? Josh Gad, the weasel. What he's going to do is. Uh... Uh oh, we're we're hurt. <laughs> we're we're in a, anything, anything at all. He could maybe sabotage a car, right? He's he's a he's a mechanic, right? He has got a weakness there, maybe. Yeah, Josh Gad is a mechanic, and he wants to take down take down Dom's garage. 
so he's going to build a, uh, a super mechanic garage. Um, and uh, I like and it. All right. Gonna, okay. uh, this is good. All right. So let's go to let's go to Zach. Zach, all right, we have we have a villain now. We have uh, we have Josh Gad's the weasel. We have a story about Letty. Where where are we at now? So Josh Gad is putting all uh, all his blueprints together. There's a montage. It's, he sings a little bit of it, but he realizes he has no financing. But he still believes in you know the American spirit. So he wants to revitalize Detroit and uh, really make it a yes. booming city for Motor City again. So he takes it to uh, Detroit. And there's kind of him and uh, Letty because he's chill, still trying to be sure, a player sure. for being good. Sure, um, sure. He lets her in on the, the ground floor, floor. And then he realized Letty's really good at making cars, too. And uh, they they actually start to profit off this mega uh, car dealership or this this mechanic. And at yeah, the end, yeah. she um, someone brings up uh, Dom Pizza. Like, hey, who ordered a Dom Pizza? And he completely forgot he was supposed to go get Dom. And he, he realizes like he, he can do better with this business. All right. So, the okay. Chauncey, all right. Yeah. Chauncey, now where do we go from here, Chauncey? Well, let's see. Like we said, yeah, she recognizes Dom. And Letty uh, gets involved with the circus because that's what happens to most people who have amnesia. They wind up with the circus. And then one day Dom actually uh, finds out she's there by happenstance because his father always took him to the circus as a kid. So he wants to recapture that with little Brian. And he, he and Letty lock eyes as she's working the trapeze and he knows she's still alive and still in his heart. Oh, and, wow, that's when, mm -hmm. and that's when Cypher comes down because she also wants to capture Letty. Not only to hurt Dom and not only to hurt the family, but because Letty has a secret. This is very exciting. So far, making a lot more sense than most of the, the movies out there. Uh, all right, so Tyler, we had, a, we had a, a tricky first round, but I think now you can come in here and bring us home. Uh, so Cypher is here. Dom's here. They're all together. It's in Detroit. What it, what, how are they going to – what's the battle? What's going to happen here? Uh, so Cypher comes in to, uh, I guess, capture Letty. Sure. I have trouble following any of these goals. Uh, and then uh, – <laughs> And uh, Letty's got, she's up on the trapeze and she's got a very nice new state-of-the-art motorized unicycle. And uh, so she gets on that motorized unicycle and she's, uh, they go off around the, uh, they're all on motorized unicycles for the big chase scene. And they're tearing down circus tents and uh, lions are chasing them. Oh, I love this. It's a major, uh, it's a major ordeal. Uh, this is amazing, right, Tyler? Uh, you you've totally come back here. I feel like you you created an amazing thing. There's this giant uh, zoo <laughs> zoo chase going on, but as we all know, every Fast and Furious movie needs a cliffhanger, and that's how we bring in uh, we bring in Zach here at the end to tie it all up and uh, and and close out this film. Um, at the very end, uh, Josh Gad, who is a reformed criminal uh, living successfully in Detroit. Uh, where out of the blue, we find out that Dom is a politician and is putting major uh, taxation on his on his business, and he gets pissed and he says, "Family first, uh uh uh, weasel first. and uh, he drapes an American flag around his body and jumps out a window into his weasel car. Oh, wow. All right. That was a different ending than I thought. Wow, Amy, what a what a story here. <laughs> Fast and Furious, Family Circus. Uh, we understand a little bit more about what happened to Letty. Uh, in the Do we? <laughs> a little bit. It's a Letty-centric movie that takes place in Detroit. I know a circus is involved. It, again, it made enough sense. I think that the unicycle, the people are going to forget about all the plot stuff when they see the animals chasing after our Fast and Furious cast, uh, but it's come time for us to pick a winner here tonight. Who performed the most family-like? Who is the leader? Who is our Toretto tonight? Who do you think you want to give all the points to? Well, this is tough. This is tough because, honestly, I really like Chauncey's idea for the opening montage. I could actually see that. That made perfect sense. I think Hit Me With Your Best Shot was a great song for that. And I love the idea of seeing young Letty falling in love with Dom. I liked that. 
I was into the motorcycle, the motorized unicycles. Um, that seems incredibly dangerous, especially yes. with the lions around. And I, I would love to see actually Fast and Furious getting involved with animals. I think that is like this idea of like an animal versus biomechanical, having a villain named Weasel in this same film and the way that Tyler was sort of able to bring these animal elements together. I admired that a lot. And I'm torn because that image to me is the movie. And mm -hmm. yet, you know, Zachary coming up with his idea of making, Zachary making Josh Gad work as well as he did as a villain, taking his idea from the beginning, which I hated and still sort of continue to hate. And yet selling me on this idea of him as a mechanic, as a man with complicated feelings, perhaps for Letty, as a man who orders Detroit style pizza because you sometimes don't have any choice when you're living in Detroit. So good. I'm, I'm tempted to go with, with Zach here, although he left the unicycle chase unresolved and I'm having an issue with that. Okay. All right. All right. Very, this is, I like how you're thinking here, but you got to give the points to somebody. Someone's got to win. It doesn't matter. If they win by a quarter mile or uh, by just a couple feet. We need a winner. We need a winner here. Who do you think? I feel like you feel you it in your gut. Trust your Who do gut. You think? Who do you think? Uh, well, I mean, look, I'm going to say, I'm going to, like, there was something about Tyler from the sense that he brought that, 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 the, the very big part of this movie together, the unicycles and the animals, they were all out there. I feel like that's it. But then there's like a, a part of me that feels like, you know, Chauncey definitely kept it on track. They all have done a great job throughout the whole show. I'm going to look at the whole show, the whole show. Who stood up the best? I, I don't know. Audience, what do you think? What do you, where are people feeling in the audience? This is a very tough one. It's, uh, People are, are very a lot of a lot of Chauncey, a lot of Chauncey in the chat. You feeling Chauncey, Amy? Because I feel like Chauncey is winning the chat vote. Chauncey is absolutely winning the chat vote. All right, Chauncey, Chauncey put his body in danger for this game, says Portable Jeff. <laughs> All right, Chauncey <laughs> is our winner. Then you know this is a All very right. fickle crowd, a fickle crowd that went <laughs> very hard with Tyler. Now they're going very hard with Chauncey. We love Zach in the very beginning. So look, we change just like Fast and Furious. We we rotate who is our, our person. So congratulations, Chauncey. Thank you for recording this. Uh, and Thank wherever you, so you are, at Children's Playground, uh, we appreciate that. And uh, everybody stand around for a second of your contestant in the green room, and we'll be right there. But I want to say thank you to you all for playing. And because you all played, you're going to get a special screen test pen. And we have tons of these screen tests coming up. So if you want to submit yourself, just go to our what? Discord Yes, you're going to get a special pen. It's going to be amazing. Uh, Amy, show off the pen. There it is. It's amazing. It so on. I just ran out of ink, so this is great. <laughs> you're going to get this in about four to six weeks. Uh, jump on our Discord at discord.gg slash Paul Shear. You can continue to submit yourself for screen test uh, audio versions and video versions. Also join in the conversation as Amy and I are tackling a brand new mini series on Unspooled Summer Blockbusters. Vote for what movies you want us to do on the podcast. We just got done with space, and we have Summer Blockbusters coming up. A big thank you to uh to molly reynolds for producing and running this whole show josh richmond's from behind the scenes our theme song and noises were created by Devin bryant a big thank you to amy nicholson and a thank you to chauncey tyler and zach uh thank you all for listening and uh we will see you all next time on another special screen test goodbye everybody see y'all later bye goodbye. bye